what it was. Y'all know who it is. And uh, you tuned in with Priceless Knowledge yourself. And I figured I'd bring y'all a little cosmic insight for the day. And uh, it's home day, y'all. And being that it's so, we're going to jump back off into this Venus series. So this right here, this is a little something, something about those people that have their Venus and Cancer in their natal chart. And before I can even get to that part, you already know what I'm going to have to do first. I'm going to bring y'all a little bit about Venus in astrology and also give y'all a quick breakdown about the sign of cancer in astrology. So I guess it ain't nothing else left to do but get it cracking, right? What is Venus? Venus is the second planet from the sun. It's never more than 47 degrees away from the sun. It's feminine energetically. And it rules the signs of Taurus and Libra, as well as the second in the seventh houses of the Zodiac chart. And for me, Venus is all about pleasure, especially the pleasure shared with somebody else in particular. This planet concerns itself with love, romance, harmony, marriages, marriages, business partnerships, and beauty. It's all about spreading happiness and tenderness, and at the same time, teaching us to love and appreciate the things that we possess. It's about the arts and each of our individual sense of the aesthetic and what we find beautiful. Venus really wants us to indulge our senses and revel in the beauty of the universe. For me, it's inextricably linked to culture, charm, and grace. And wherever it shows up, it's going to bring a little touch of class. You know, Venus is, it really wants us to appreciate the luxuries and appreciate the exquisite nature of things. And as I always tell y'all, when we fucking with Venus... It's an extremely sensual, not necessarily sexual, but an extremely sensual world. And so what is cancer? Cancer is the fourth sign of the zodiac. It rules the fourth house of home. It's ruled by the moon. It rules over the stomach, brain, and chest. And its symbol is the crab. And its mantra for me, who is a cancer, is I feel. Cancer is most definitely cardinal water, y'all. And it could be emotional tidal wave, it really can. But more than anything else, it's about home. This sign is very concerned with your roots. And family kind of comes first, always, wherever this energy is involved. It's all about the maternal, the domestic, and the need to nurture. In its best form, cancer energy is the most serene and harmonious you can fathom. And when it comes in a negative bag, it's the most turbulent and dangerous waters you could ever have a nightmare of having to tread in. You know, cancer is the sign of emotion and feelings. And it really does change like the 28 phases of the moon. And being Cardinal Water, you got to understand that Cardinal Water did carve the Grand Canyon, man. You know, cancer is all about emotions. And so what happens when you have Venus in cancer in your natal chart? Well, what comes to mind about these people off the rip is... You know, they are incredibly intuitive, nurturing, and sensitive in love. They are healers. And I mean, they are healers. And their love nature can be extremely spiritually nourishing in its highest form, man. Those born with Venus here really place a great amount of value in their emotional bonds they created. They love hard. And it's difficult for these people to pretend to be casual about sex and love because due to their sensitive nature, they will catch feelings and you will, too. I'm going to tell you off the rip because, you know, it's so easy for these natives to go off the deep end in love until they get hurt. And then, you know, they want to retreat and be scared to fool with anybody else ever again. You know, they become super self-protective of their emotions because the love they have is one of a kind. You got to understand that. With Venus and Cancer, man, these people are so intuitive. They know where you've been hurt at before you tell them. You know what I mean? And they're going to bring it to you. They're healers. We talked about this a little bit with Venus and Pisces. These people are healers. And so when they get you alone, even in a sexual situation, they're going to bring you the nourishment you need. They're going to nourish your body. They're going to nourish your mind. They're going to nourish your soul. They're going to nourish your emotions. You know what I mean? That's just real. Their sensitivity is something else. You know, getting a Venus and Cancer out of their shell 
is going to revolve around how safe they feel. And that's up to the situation and what side of the personality that they're showing you, to be honest. These people are extremely moody and they have a tendency to take shit way too personally sometimes, especially when it's coming from their partner. And if they sense any type of rejection, they're going to become very defensive and even manipulative in a situation. These people have excellent memories. And if they ever had any type of feeling for you at all, it ain't never left. They're going to always care for you. And the memories y'all had together are always going to be sacred to them. And sometimes that can cause an issue, you know, especially if they're the motherfucker that fucked up because they have this fantasized view of how things were. They remember all the good things, but sometimes the other individual doesn't remember anything but how bad this Venus and Cancer individual manipulated them and fucked them over. Even if the sexual experience was at the real. Because... With the Venus and Cancer, the sexual experience will be at the real out of this world. But anyway, you know, the thing and with this memory, you also have to understand that if you betray them, they ain't going to never forget it either. They do hold grudges. And they might come across in a very passive aggressive way. You have to understand that cancer it don't come straight at you. It always comes sideways. It's always fine trying to manipulate the waters. You know what I mean? And sometimes, you know, these people just might need to be direct instead of doing all this passive aggressive behavior. But that's just my opinion. You know, these folks are extremely sentimental. And like I said, they have these remarkable memories and they will hold on to a lost love or a family member or a memory they had with a friend to the grave. They'll never forget it, man. If you touch their heart, then that piece of their heart that you touch will always belong to you. And I mean, that can create issues in relationships, but it's also something beautiful, man. The love these people have is one of a kind. You know, this is feelings. And this is cardinal feelings, bringing love into it. You know what I mean? So this is one of a kind. And, you know, the loyalty they have is unheralded. And it can't be fucked with. Venus and Cancers are incredibly imaginative lovers because they're very imaginative people. You know, <clears throat> Being caught in the water, you know, it makes them yearn for a level of intimacy that sometimes might not be realistic, though. You know, especially with the desire contemporary. Because, you know, sometimes when you're a cancer and you don't take things direct, you've been sitting back so long that somebody else didn't pull up. And they, even if you were on their radar, like, you got to understand something else. You can't sit in the wings on that weird shit, though. And sometimes Venus and Cancers do be on that weird shit. I have to say that. But it's okay. Sometimes you just have to learn how to let go. Them pinchers, them claws, man, you got to let go sometimes. Okay? You know, this sensitivity that they have, it can make them feel vulnerable romantically. So a lot of times they're going to be so extremely cautious in love that, and they're definitely not the ones to rush into any type of romance, even if they do get something established. You know what I mean? But if they ever get hurt, it might make these people never fool with anybody else on that level again or not open up authentically to anybody else again. You know what I mean? And so having this placement natally can also present boundary issues for some, especially if they had a tumultuous life growing up, which, you know, it might cause some of them to be on the more promiscuous side in their more uh, younger years or when they're a little bit more immature. And it's really just them looking for love in all the wrong places. You know what I mean? And they're seeking this fulfillment, you know what I mean? In doing the wrong things because they do have this sexual power and they just want somebody to love them that ain't going to reject them or run off on them because they have this loyalty to that. They'll never give up on you. Even if they don't like you, they won't give up on you. You know, that's just what it is. 
you know, and, you know, when you're looking for love in all the wrong places, if this is a behavior you find yourself in, I strongly suggest that you find some kind of way to get some spiritual nourishment instead, man. Because the nourishment that you're looking for in these sexual encounters with multiple partners, you know, it ain't going to do nothing but hurt your feelings or hurt your reputation and hurt other people's feelings in the process, man. Because the love you have is one of a kind. And you can't be giving your power away to everybody, Venus and Cancer. You understand? You know, you can't be giving that shit away to people that can't handle it or can't deserve or don't deserve it. Because, you know, this can throw off their in, in their energy or even cause psychic turbulence. And speaking of psychic turbulence, you know, Venus and Cancer people, y'all are so intuitive and so empathic that you can pick up other people's psychic turbulence. So y'all are going to need to spend a lot of time alone trying to sort out, excuse me, fuck my hat up, but trying to sort out, you know, what's your shit and what's everybody else's shit. And that can be hard sometimes, but it's just necessary for you to get by yourself every single day. And that might present problems in personal relationships or sexual relationships, because a lot of the times your partner don't understand that, you know, you just need to be by yourself and you need to be by yourself. Don't mean that you don't need to be with them or you don't want to be with them. It's just you need to be by yourself. And that's what's healthy for you and spiritually nourishing for you at that moment. OK, and if you just hold back on this passive aggressive way and don't tell anybody about it, then how is anybody going to know? So Venus and cancer people, you have to establish some type of boundaries. You know what I mean? Speak up for yourself because you're as strong as it gets. You know, these motherfuckers are definitely afraid of rejection. And this fear can be crippling in the aspect that it can cause them to never pursue something or someone that they feel supremely strong about. You know, this fear of rejection, it could really be crippling for a lot of people with cancer placements. And it's no different with Venus and cancer. You know what I mean? This can cause you not to pursue that one love that you want, man. And hey, man, who wants to live a life like that? Watching from the sidelines or settling. We ain't doing that. You know what I mean? We ain't doing that. It's about to be the age of Aquarius. We ain't doing that. And, you know, what they need is a partner who they feel comforted in and emotionally safe with enough, you know, that you can, they can kind of just feel, get the same feeling when they stare up at the moon. Excuse me. What I'm trying to say is they need a partner that brings them the same feeling they get that the feeling they get when they're staring up at the moon. Because I promise you, any type of person with, you know, strong cancer placements or strong cancer influence in their chart, staring at that moon, man, there's nothing more powerful or common for you. Maybe staring at the ocean. But, uh, hey, I'm just trying to help you. And the main thing I want to address with y'all, Venus and Cancer, is all that resentment that you carry around. And be acting so motherfucking passive aggressive about. Don't y'all understand that you're only weighing yourself down with that bullshit. You got to forgive the individual that hurt you. And, you know, or the universe for the circumstances or yourself for allowing it. And once you do, maybe you'll be able to find an authentic love again. And maybe the authentic love you've been looking for the whole time is living in your mirror. But hey. I'm just the astrology guy. Say, man, there's been some priceless knowledge just here. If you're fooling with me, please like, share, and subscribe. I need y'all to please hit that like button if you listen to this video and you think it was even half ass all right, man. Even if you don't fuck with it a lot, man, hit that like button so we can get on this algorithm and help somebody else. If you're interested in any astrological readings whatsoever, please either hit me up in the comments below or email me at mr.turner1300 at gmail.com. And uh, say, man, just remember, no matter where you got Venus at, no matter where you got Mars at, no matter where the sun is at, the moon is at, no matter where the transit planets are at in aspect to your natal planets, it's all right. It's just energy. 
is there, but that don't mean you have to use it. Just because you build like that, don't mean you got to build like that, man. Hey, man. You already know what it was. It's been your boy. <laughs> now, fuck that. This ain't your boy. This your man. You know what I mean? Because this ain't no boy. I don't play no games. This your man. Rodrigo the Don, man. Hey. I love all y'all, man. I'm finna hit y'all in a little bit. We're gonna go to the opposite end of the spectrum. And I'm gonna bring y'all a little something, something about those people that have Venus and Capricorn in their natal chart. And until then, man, keep it true.